What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Super long title. Don't know how I'll compress it, but anyways, this game is super well optimized out of the box, so well done to the developers. I'll be showing you how to get even more stable, consistent performance with a few tweaks in the game. That being said, I'm not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. Without further ado, let's begin. Hopping into game, things look a little bit weird for me as I'm playing 16 by 9 on a ultra wide monitor. So things are a little bit crushed up and weird at the moment. In order to fix this, I'll need to head into settings, followed by graphics and change it from 3440 to just 2560, which is 16 by 9, borderless, which is already correct. I'll confirm this. And now things are fixed up. People aren't stretchy anymore. All right. So in settings, followed by display settings, we only have HDR, which you can only toggle if you have an HDR supported display and it's turned on at Windows, brightness is your preference, and color vision assistance is too. All of the settings that matter are inside of graphics settings here. And besides recommending to play this game on full screen mode, there's nothing much I need to change here currently. I'll leave everything at as high as it can go. Field of view, maybe around there-ish, and an unlimited FPS cap. Under advanced, everything should already be mostly maxed out. Yeah, I think so. DLSS off, so we're getting native resolution and other upscaling. Let's find out just how good this game performs. It's actually super but well optimized out of the box. So grabbing my controller, let's fire into the game. Enable a third party FPS overlay. If you have it on Steam, obviously you can enable the FPS counter in the Steam overlay, but I'll turn on something with a bit more information. Obviously cutscenes and things like that will probably be limited to 60, much like this one here. But when we hop into the actual game itself, everything should be working with uncapped frames. There we go, so 60 and still 60, right? Settings, graphics, advanced, Make sure this is uncapped. There we go. Confirm. Yep. All right. There we go. Native performance 2K on a 3080 Ti. We're sitting at a solid 103 2 ish FPS in this current scene. I'll leave everyone as is, as this is in this scene. During combat, things are still pretty stable at around 94 95. So, out of the box with everything on Ultra, this game is super well optimized. If we were to be running on much lower end hardware, your frames will still be pretty good, of course. But let's head into settings, followed by graphics. Disable my overlay for a moment, and we'll talk about what we should customize to get an even better experience. First of all, V-Sync should be disabled unless you're getting screen tearing. Field of view is entirely your preference. Set this to what you like and leave it there. And besides playing on full screen mode with the refresh rate matching our monitor and resolution as well, we should then head into advanced settings. In here, texture filtering, super cheap effect, as long as you have enough VRAM to store all of the textures anyways. A bit of extra filtering to make things look even better is usually pretty good. 16x on most cards, you can lower this, but you won't see a huge performance increase. Shadow quality, as there's tons of lights, having this on the higher end is better, as things will look way better with better lighting. Geometry quality, high as well, if you can handle it. This has to do mainly with VRAM available in your system, and I'd recommend leaving this on the medium to high end as well. I'll set this to medium just to see what happens. Real-time reflections should be screen-based reflections, not ray-traced reflections, so it should be a very cheap effect. And once again, I'd recommend leaving it on for a better looking game. Motion blur is your preference. Personally, I usually have this off, but as it's not a Twitch shooter per se, having motion blur on can help improve the experience, but do disable it if you're someone who struggles with motion sickness. SSAO, which is screen space ambient occlusion, adds more depth to objects with shadows and things like that. I'd recommend having this on, but it should have a much less noticeable effect than shadow quality, and the performance impact should also be roughly negligible on modern hardware. Render scale should be set to 100%, if you're playing at native resolution, anti-aliasing is entirely your preference. Personally, I prefer this off as it gives better performance and I don't mind the odd jagged edge. If you find that jagged edges annoy you, FXAA makes everything blurry, MLAA is a much better option, and TAA may give you a more overall blurry experience, so MLAA is probably the best option here, though definitely set it to off if you're going to be using NVIDIA TLSS. Otherwise, if you're going to be using FSR, you'll need to have this set to one of the options here, so maybe MLAA is the best one here if you're going to be using FSR1. You don't need it 
enabled for FSR2 or DLSS. So just keep that in mind. If you want to use the older FSR technology, you'll need anti-aliasing. We'll get there in just a moment. Depth of field is your preference as well. It shouldn't have a huge performance impact and reflection quality medium is probably good enough here. DLSS and FSR will give you a huge boost in performance. But for now, we'll see what change these minor graphics options have made to our FPS in game. So heading back, re-enabling my overlay, things still look pretty good. You can see small amounts of aliasing as I'm playing at 2K. Aliased corners shouldn't be too noticeable. No, nope, these doors are definitely much more aliased. If we change to FXAA, everything should be a little bit blurrier. Not really. I assume they've kept the strength really low, just so it slightly helps with aliased edges without making everything too blurry. As for performance, we're sitting at 125-ish. If we instead use MLAA, we should see much better results. A little bit. And frame rate has improved to one almost 40-ish. If we instead head across to TAA, except this, things look even better. Alias corners are much more hidden, and we're sitting at around 135-ish FPS. So TAA is good for overall looks. MLAA is probably best for performance. Scrolling down further, we'll get even more improvements using FSR or DLSS. All of these options have multiple presets. Auto, I wouldn't recommend. Instead, choose quality, and if you really need, push yourself to balanced. This will change what resolution the game is rendered at, and use AI magic to upscale. It. All FSR 1, 2, and DLSS have a quality preset, and I'd recommend starting at the higher quality end and only then moving your way down if you really need extra FPS. Each one has a sharpness option, and you'd usually have this around the 0.5 to 0.7 range, depending on how much sharpness you like, just to get rid of some possible blurring that comes with AI upscaling anyways. If we enable this, you'll see a huge increase in performance. We've now moved up to 200-ish FPS, which is great. And of course, visual fidelity increases as as well. Both DLSS and FSR2 should have great performance increases while still keeping the game looking as good as possible. 160 for FSR2. FSR on quality. We do have an ultra quality option, but I'll use quality just to keep it more fair with the rest of them. We're sitting at 200, 180-ish, 170-ish, 180-ish FPS. And DLSS on quality. We're setting at around 170-ish FPS. So when it comes to performance and look, you should be using DLSS or FSR2 here for the most part. But ultimately, you don't really need to, as playing it native should give you a very good experience, as this game is super well optimized out of the box. That's probably all the optimization you'll really need. But obviously, this game gets pretty goofy when it comes to combat. It's a really fun experience. FPS isn't going to be something you're chasing as long as you're above 60. There's not really much you need to do to keep it well above that point, especially on mid to high end hardware. If you really need more performance by dropping more settings further, I'd recommend possibly pushing DLSS or FSR to balanced instead of just quality. And beyond that, consider changing the shadow quality, but it may have a much larger visual impact. So for example, moving from high down to low, you'll see a great improvement in our FPS. So around 160-ish, all the way up to 180-ish lowering shadow quality, but it does have a rather large visual impact. If we were to change geometry quality, you should see a much smaller impact in FPS. As you can see, practically nothing really gained on higher end hardware. Real-time reflections, turning this off, we should also see a very small impact as well, if any at all. A few FPS gained, not too many, probably probably around 1%-ish, which if you really need is something you can do, but having reflections makes the water and wet streets look a lot more alive, and it's something that I'd highly recommend keeping on. Disabling screen space ambient occlusion, SSAO, should result in a very small impact in quality as well, and visual quality too. A handful of FPS gain, moving from the low 190s or high 180s to 195, so there's definitely something gained there. Depth of field, disabling this should change almost nothing when it comes to FPS, and that that is actually not that true. We gained about 15 FPS from 195-ish. That's really good, actually. It must be a much higher quality blur that they're using, causing a medium impact on your FPS in-game. Finally, turning off DLSS to get more realistic frame counts, we go back to using just MLAA anti-aliasing, so 153-ish FPS. If we were to raise the shadow quality to medium, geometry to high, as it has a small impact, real-time reflections on, SSAO on, as well as maybe depth 
the field, this is probably where I would leave the game for the most part, probably also raising reflections as well, if possible. There's no option to change the texture resolution at right, which is a little bit weird, as this game isn't really VRAM heavy with whatever settings we have right now. It's using around 2.6 gigabytes of VRAM, meaning it should run on pretty much any system. That's really good, actually. There's not too much going on in this scene, though. To fix aliased corners and things like that, I definitely recommend using DLSS or FSR2, and simply enabling these, we get a huge boost in performance, and things just look a lot better overall pushing everything back up as high as it goes, which is really only two options here, this game should still look absolutely incredible. It's very well optimized and definitely something that's had a lot of time put into it, so hats off to the developers. There's not too much that you need to do to get this game running perfectly, and on lower end systems you do have a handful of options you can mess around with to practically double your FPS, while still keeping the game looking okay. But anyways, that's really about it for this super quick guide, hopefully you found it somewhat useful. Thank you for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, I'll see you all next time, ciao! Yeah.